Greetings. <clears throat> Today, I'd like to tell you a little story. Um, Spirit has guided me to write this story, and <clears throat> I need to get it out there. Spirit is making me feel like there's many people who are going to benefit from the content of this story. It's sort of a parable, and it's interesting because I would call it an interactive parable. It's less about what I'm going to define as the moral and more about mm, the story. I guess it's sort of like some a lot of people view art. It's about what you get from it. How do you behold it? What resonates with you? What lessons will you learn, etc.? Hold on, I got a cat here. Come on. Siamese number two. <laughs> okay. So, what resonates with you in this story? It's about seven minutes long, so if you don't have time, uh, make sure to watch it later. Uh, but if you feel ready and moved here we go a young man was hiking through the woods one day when he got lost the sun was going down and he was getting tired and a bit scared he had not told anyone where he was going and now seemed to be walking in circles when all of a sudden he came to a clearing where he spotted a small log cabin he thought if he could go inside he would be safe for the night he would rest and wake refreshed in the morning before continuing his journey. His intuition, a small voice inside his head that sometimes seemed to come from right below his breastbone, said, No, do not go in there. Walk about an hour further and you will be home free. But he didn't listen. The young man knew it would be cold soon, and even for a strong, healthy lad such as he, to be alone in the dark wood at night, was quite a frightful thought. Once again he heard the voice of intuition. Some say this is how angels communicate with us. Do not go in there. It is not safe and you will regret it. <clears throat> Walk on just a little further and you will be out of the woods home free. But he was tired and wasn't sure he could trust his thoughts that seemed to be creeping into the his mind. As he hesitated, he saw the figure of a thin, frail old man walk past the window and close the checkered curtains. He decided to go knock on the door and see if the old man would let him stay just for the night. He knew that even if the old man tried anything, that he could easily overpower him. Approaching the door, getting ready to knock, he heard the voice of a third and final time say, Do not do it. Don't knock. Please don't knock. It is not safe. Please walk on a bit further and you will be home free. There was a sadness and a desperation to the voice by now. And when he would recall the story later at dinners and parties, he remembered each time how he almost would have followed the voice had he not been so hungry, tired, and afraid. But he had made up his mind, and knock he did. Three times he knocked, with the rapping of his knuckles growing louder and louder each time. He was about to give up when he heard the old man's creaky voice say, Wait a minute, I'm coming. <clears throat> The old man opened the door wearing a triangle-shaped nightcap, like in the Night Before Christmas poem, and holding a dimly lit lantern. The young man asked if it would be all right for him to rest for the night, and he would continue his journey in the morning refreshed, to which the old man calmly said, There is no place for you here, son. Best be on your way. But the young man persisted. Flexing his muscles, he tried to intimidate the older gentleman a bit. Please, sir, I've been walking all day and am grown tired and have lost my way. 
Let me stay just one night, and I promise I will be gone in the morning. Now, being a young and handsome man, he was used to getting his way, as he was the baby in the family of three children. And he knew... Sorry, my cats are climbing all over my closet. He thinks it's uh, Closet Mountain. Let me go take care of this real quick. Oliver? Come on, Oliver. Now you know better. I've told you not to do that when I'm recording. I love you. We'll play later. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's Daddy's good, Oliver. Anyway, back to the story. I might cut that part out. I might not. I don't know. I'll probably just let it run. Um, <clears throat> ah, let's see. The difficulty with interruptions is where were you? <laughs> ah, that's right. I promise I will be gone in the morning. Now, being a young and handsome man, he was used to getting his way. And as he was the baby in a family of three children, he knew that he would stay two, three, four, even five days if he felt like it until he was ready to leave. The old man knew it too. The young man persisted and the old man stated calmly, there is really no room here for you. This is not the place for you to be. And that feeling in his gut once again admonished him saying, this is not the way. And it further scolded, what you are doing is not right. But again, the young man, fearing the dark of the woods, starving, body aching, knew he would have to spend the night here or he wouldn't make it. So he persisted until he got his way, using his body to keep the old man from closing the door on him. The old man, with a sad, defeated look, reluctantly said, Well, come on in then. Being one of the old ways, who knew the rule of hospitality, he offered the young man food and drink and a warm bed by the fire. The young man looked around and thought, How dark, old, and lifeless it is in here. But otherwise thought nothing of it. He had mutton stew, rhubarb tarts, fresh goat's milk, and honey mead, all of it very delicious. As he drifted off to sleep on the wool mats and blankets that were put out for him by his host, he thought of how he might like to stay a few more days to take advantage of more of the old man's food, drink, and hospitality. But when he awoke in the morning, things looked quite different. For one thing, when he tried to rise from his place by the fire, he could not. That's when he noticed the chains that tied his wrists, ankles, and necks to anchors in stone by the fireplace. He hollered until the old man crept into the room and then demanded that he be set free at once. But the old man only responded with, You are the only one who can set you free. Confused, upset, and a little intoxicated from the previous night's meal, the young man again demanded to be set free. Again, the old man admonished him. You are the only one who can set you free. But feeling he was being toyed with, the young man in anger and defiance demanded a third time to be set free. But he was met with the same admonishment by the old man. The boy gnashed his teeth, acted as ferociously as he could, as he was used to getting his way through manipulation of others. But the old man just went about his business ignoring him. After hours of carrying on like a rabid dog, the young man finally sat down and began to cry. Feeling quite sorry for himself, 
He didn't know what to do at this point. His violence and strength were not helping him get his way, only hurting him more the more he strained against the chains that bound him. He soon realized for the moment that resistance, as they say, was futile. Aside from his shackles, he was not treated poorly at all. To the contrary, the old man took quite good care of the young one. He provided blankets for his bed, meat and bread and milk and cheese and meat and beer for his belly. He even provided and managed the emptying of a chamber pot for all the young man's elimination needs. And all the times that the young man would throw temper tantrums and bemoan his situation, the old man never once beat the younger, nor treated him aggressively in any way. Even the few times that the spiteful boy had thrown his full chamber pot at the older, he just calmly cleaned up the mess and then continued on about his day. As I said, the old man took great care not to mistreat his guest. A few years passed, and by this time the young man had got it into his head that maybe he could trick the older into unlocking his shackles and unchaining him by what is known today as quote-unquote good behavior. He determined that once he had tricked the old man into releasing him, that he would murder the man for all the pain and suffering he endured, for he still believed that the old man held the key to his bondage. Though he seems kind, he thought, that old man is really nothing but a sneaky, spiteful, evil liar. So as part of his plan, the young man determined to try to make a friend of the old man. He would grow kinder and kinder to him and less resistant, and then would ask the old man to unlock just one of his shackles. A few months later, he would ask the old man to unlock two shackles, and that is when he would strike. Like the great slave gladiator hero Spartacus, who threw off the shackles of his ancient Roman oppressors, he would finally escape and be set free, but not before exacting retribution upon the old man for locking him up and treating him like a dog. The young man patiently bided his time, waiting for the moment he would strike. But that day never came. You see, the one thing that he never thought would happen did. He eventually began to care for the old man. I mean, truly care. He didn't understand the feelings he had. Now, almost five years after becoming a captive of this older householder and harboring nothing but ill feelings and intent toward him, that he would feel kindly towards the old man came as a great shock to the boy. In his newfound compassion, he began to talk to the old man and ask him stories about his youth. What had he wanted to be? What was his trade and profession? What made him decide to live alone in the woods? The old man was visibly pleased at these questions and began to tell story after story, tale after tale of his youth, his profession as a bricklayer and then stonemason, and how after getting injured in uh, he really wasn't much good to anyone and decided to leave the city for the wilderness. <coughs> he told about how he didn't really know much about the wild and initially found many of the forest-dwelling creatures to be strange and frightening. But one day, when he was out foraging for berries and wild greens, he happened across a series of white toadstool mushrooms arrayed in a circle, and knew from stories told in his village when he was a young lad that this was a fairy circle. Once he realized this, his heart began to sink because he had heard that if a mortal steps into a fairy circle, he might never be heard from again. So you can imagine his true fright at realizing that he was smack dab in the middle of this unholy place. He recounted for the young man about how he met the fairies that day, including the queen of the fae, Morgana, 
and was held in trial in a fairy court that was convened on the spot for trespassing. Because he was ignorant and not deliberately trying to violate fairy law, nor did he have intent to hunt or harm fairies, he was given a very light sentence. The fairy queen told him that his sentence would be to remain in these woods, dark and dreary, until someone much drearier and darker in heart would come along. You will feed, clothe, and shelter him, and will be bound by his, and he will be bound by his own shackles. For only the darkest hearts, empty of compassion for others, will be able to find this place. You must not force this young man to do anything. You must not be violent either. But you will know him by his persistence, insistence, and violence in his heart. Even so, do not be afraid, as you will live as long as the boy lives. So you must take good care of him. Further, you will give him the best of everything you have and will clean up after him and take any insults he hurls and you will not retaliate nor plot nor scheme nor deceive this person or become vengeful in any way. The punishment for violation of this pronouncement is death. Now, not all the fairies would treat a human this severely just for stumbling into their circle. But Queen Morgana had had it up to here with all the humans destroying the forest for wood for their buildings and ships without even attempting to replace them and with no thought or regard to their kind nor hers. She had had enough and given her animosity towards humans at this point thought that she was rather lenient with the sentence she pronounced. The old man told the boy how he despaired in the woods and gnashed his teeth and wailed for many years, and how he resented the evil that he felt the fairy queen had done him, and of how for many years he sat in his cabin in the woods plotting revenge for all that he had missed out on. For though he was injured and had a slight limp when he first entered the woods, he was not yet an old man. He told of how the bitter resentment festered and how at one point he knew that if he could be let free from the fairy curse, as he called it, that in a rage of revenge and retribution, he would burn down the whole forest, not caring who he hurt in the process. And he told of how after years and years of harboring hatred for whom he had seen as his captors, one day, those feelings all magically vanished and were replaced by realizing that what he really hated was himself. This realization changed his way of seeing things. Along with his thoughts, he worked out and tried and tested many different ideas and theories on how to be happy again, if indeed he ever was truly happy. Eventually, he stumbled upon a few noble truths. 1. Always act in the spirit of compassion and unconditional love. 2. Always offer hospitality to guests. In this way, some have entertained angels and secured good fortune unawares. 3. Always be forgiving of yourself and others. And 4. You must take care of yourself and be responsible for your own actions. To not do this simply generates guilt in self, and the heart can't handle it. And then he told the young man, now a full-grown adult, of how after his revelations, he learned to be at peace with whatever happened. Knowing that all things are connected, and that everything emanates from love, he began to think that maybe the one who was to come would never show up. But it did not bother him. He told of how a few knocked on the door and asked for help, but didn't force their way in, so he knew that they were not the ones. Then he told of how his heart leaped with joy in the day the young man showed up on his do doorstep 
but also with a little sadness. For he knew from his own experience what kind of journey of mind, spirit, heart, and soul lay ahead for the boy. And he knew it would not likely be all that pleasant, but it was necessary for the both of them. It took the old man many months to share all these stories, during which the younger man, again who was now a full-grown adult, began to, still in his shackles, help with chores. He scrubbed dishes, folded linens, and clothing they both shared, for they were similar in build and stature, and even helped prepare meals for the both of them. The younger man began to appreciate his position and finally realized how blessed he was to have a roof over his head, a full belly, and a warm place to warm his bones and companionship. One day he thought to himself, maybe I am to blame for being here. Maybe I am do hold the key to my own chains. He stopped blaming the old man society, nature, and everything else for his troubles. In fact, from that moment forward, he thanked the old man every day for his true hospitality and compassion he had shown. He recounted all his choices and actions that led to this moment, that led to walking through the woods alone without telling anyone, that led to him knocking on the old man's door. In that special moment, he realized, finally, that he was the one responsible for all the decisions that led him to the old man's cabin, and that he was the one responsible for his bondage. And the very next moment, he heard a voice that he hadn't heard for many years. It was the same voice that had cautioned him and tried to stop him all those years ago from knocking. The voice that he had uh, that had counseled him to walk a bit further and he would be home free when he heard that voice he wept with joy for he knew this was intuition and some say the voice of angels and then the voice said well done the man awoke the next morning to something hot on his left shoulder he leapt to his feet and jumped in agony <clears throat> but then he realized what had happened. He rolled into the fire. How can that be, he asked himself, with all these chains binding me to the place? Then he realized his mistake. He was no longer chained. His shackles had released. He knew in his heart that the old man was not responsible but that recognizing and acknowledging the powers and actions of his choices is what had freed him. He was ecstatic. He couldn't wait to tell the old man. By now they had truly become friends, each valuing the other's company. The old man was happy to hear this, but a part of him was sad as well, because he knew that the younger man would probably soon be on his way and he had grown quite fond of his company. But he knew this was his own choice to make and that it would not be proper or fair to try to prevent the young man from following his heart path, nor trying to manipulate him in any way. The old man told the other how happy he was that his shackles were released and that he knew he would probably soon be on his way and that he would hate to see him go because he loved having him around and what great company he was and that he wished nothing but the best for the man. But the younger man had also grown fond of the older and he had learned the true meaning of compassion and unconditional love. He asked the old man if he would mind if he could stay on a little longer to which the old man happily agreed. But the old man, having learned much in life, gave this one admonishment. I love you, boy, and I love your company, and I would have you stay as long as you want. 
but promise that you won't linger just because you think I need help. And promise me that you will go when your heart says it is time. The man promised, and they both knew that he would keep it. Several more years passed. In that time, the boy and the old man shared stories, made music, banged drums, and sang songs they each remembered from their youth. They ate together, gave thanks for their blessings together, and harvested and hunted together. They both smiled bigger and brighter with much more heart than either ever had before. For they knew that they were two kindred spirits and that nothing could break their bond of brotherly love. As time passed, the evidence of age began to show on the old man, and he wasn't able to move as he had previously. The younger man knew that he needed to return the kindness that the old man had initially showed him. He took on more responsibility around the house, cleaning, cooking, and even taking care of the older man's chamber pot. He did these things with pleasure because it just felt good helping his friend. Months went by like this and the old man, despite all the younger man was doing for him, finally succumbed to the effects of time and age. He was sad when his friend died, and though he could have left at any time, he was a little fearful about traveling out of this small piece of wooded land that he had gotten to know so well in the past few years. But eventually, he felt the pull and realized it was time to move on. The young man, now 10 years older than when he first arrived at this place, determined it was time to leave. Before departing, he erected a sign outside the cabin saying, let this be a place of rest for weary travelers and those in need of mercy and forgiveness. With his belongings loaded onto his back, he turned and gave one last look to the place where he learned so much, then began to walk. Though he was afraid of what lay ahead, for he knew the world could change much in 10 years, he knew that he must have courage and continue moving forward. He had not gotten seven paces when in his mind he asked the question, How do I get out of here? And where should I go to? Then that voice that he had not heard in so long, the voice of his inner guidance, gave him the one most valuable piece of information that he needed to go forward from that point. Start where you are. Go just a little bit further east. Follow the sound of the river, and you will eventually come to a town. From there, you will be home free. And, added the voice, steer clear of fairy rings. Thank you for listening to my story today. This is an original story. As I said, Spirit inspired me to write it, and uh, I'm just so happy I was able to get it finished for you guys. Um, it may not be in its final, final form. I'm probably going to see if I can get it published by one of the pagan publishers, maybe Llewellyn or some other publisher. Um, I'll have to pray on that and see what Spirit tells me. If you like this video and you want more content like this, uh, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe below. You know the drill. Um, but uh, I want to thank you all for watching today. And make sure to leave a comment if this story touched you in any way, if you learned anything from it, if you have any questions about the story. Um, I won't answer questions. I can't answer questions like what does this part mean? What does that part mean? What I'd rather have is you uh, comment and say this is how this part affected me. This is how that part affected me. This is what I feel it means, etc. This is how I think it relates to my life. You know, stuff like that is definitely stuff, uh, comments, the type of comments that I'd be looking for. Um, of course, you know, you're free. You can leave whatever comments you want. Um, as I've said before, I don't, you know, I don't take kindly to trolls 
wasting my time and clogging up space. But if you have a legitimate comment that might seem negative, uh, that's truth seeking, that you're trying to find information, I'm happy to uh, happy to entertain any position that may be, um, I guess, adversarial or different or whatever. So don't be afraid to, to put things that other people might consider negative and that maybe other spiritual people wouldn't let you put on their channel. Also, please refrain from vulgarity, even though I may slip and use a, a, you know, F word or swear word every once in a while. It will be for great effect, um, but it's not the norm. So, again, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Uh, oh, keep an eye out for the weekly... Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard being a new professional. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just was told to do it, so I'm doing the best I can. So, the lesson... Oh, <laughs> which is a great segue to the lesson... Uh, I'm intending to put out a video either this week or next week, which is a follow-up to this story. It's tied in. It's related. Um, and it'll be a short discussion about starting where you are and what that means. Um, how you don't have to be an expert to get started doing something. Uh, you just start where you are. But we'll talk about that more in another video. And again, I love you all. Thank you for watching. And feel free to click like and subscribe. And I don't have a Patreon yet, or I'd have you go ahead and, uh, and ask you to subscribe to Patreon like everybody else is because Daddy needs to put food on the table just like everybody else. And uh, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm trying to earn my keep. So uh, love and blessings. Share this with everybody. Bye-bye.